Hello artists, it's Miss Casino here. Good to see you. I have project two for you. We're gonna be working on self-portraits. Now, what's a self-portrait? Is a self-portrait just something that is done with pencil, pen, looking in the mirror, sketch, paint? No, it can also be a sculpture. It could be a photography. It could be even a selfie that you take of yourself and put on social media. It's true, there's a lot of modern self-portraiture going on every day on social media. So let's think about how far back self-portraits go. Well, they all go all the way back to the caveman days, even before they had mirrors. Uh, a student brought up, hey, maybe they just looked in their reflection of water, possibly. So let's talk Vincent Van Gogh. He used self-portraits. He did about 40 self-portraits throughout his career. Um, he struggled with depression and he used self-portraits to show the outside world without words how he was feeling inside and work through that struggle. Um, Paul Cezanne did a lot of, a French artist, painter, um, did a ton of self-portraits. I really love his portraiture because he used a bendy palette knife to actually lay the paint on his canvas. So his paintings were very textured feeling. Picasso. Pablo Picasso, he did many self portraits in many different styles. Um, Frida Kahlo, Frida got in an accident, a bus accident when she was young and was laid up in bed for years. So she would put the mirror up on the ceiling above her bed and she was able to paint um, portraits of herself because she was the only one available to paint. So she was a passionate woman. She was a strong woman. She had a lot of feelings that she expressed through her self-portraitures. Um, Andy Warhol did a ton of self-portraits um, with screen printing and photography. Basquiat, who lived um, basically on the streets of New York in the beginning of his career, uh, did tons of self large self-portraits with found pieces of uh, wood and cardboard and anything he could get his hands on. Um, he did self-portraiture displaying his struggles, being black and living in New York City, being homeless, um, trying to break into the art world. He would gather with his friends and as his friends were talking and um, basically just hanging out, he would write words that were relevant within his portraiture. Um, who else? Let's think about Keith Haring. Keith Haring did some great self-portraits. He was a very social guy, lived in New York City, did huge murals for the community. Um, Kusama, Kusama is a Japanese artist who's still alive today. She is um, famous for doing giant spaces filled with polka dots, but she also did a lot of self-portraits to work through her mental health as well. Um, those self-portraits have a lot of texture, a lot of polka dots. Okay, so let's get to our project today. Our project is going to be a self portrait with a twist, okay? Because I got a problem. I come into the classroom or I see my friends, and my artist friends in the park and I don't really know how they're feeling because I can only see their eyes, right? We're wearing masks to protect our friends and family. And I can see a little bit how people are feeling because they're so expressive with their eyebrows and their eyes. But I'm missing this part of the face. So today I'm gonna to teach you how to fold your paper so we can draw a self-portrait with pencil, Sharpie to bold our lines, and then color pencil, marker, cray paws, whatever you got at home to do our blended color. So here's our self-portrait. I'm gonna show you from the side, it's folded like this. I'm gonna pull it down and tuck this back piece under to reveal what's under my mask. So in the next part of the video, I'm gonna show you how to fold the paper and how to set up the proportions of your head and the mask. All right. All right, artists. I'm gonna show you how to fold our paper for our self-portrait so that we start with a mask and we fold it down to see the rest of what's behind the mask. We are gonna be using a pencil, a Sharpie, and other, any other color pencils, markers, um, I suggest you could use oil pastels or oil crepe paws to deep blend. I'm going to be using colored pencils. So we're going to start with, this is a 12 by 18 piece of white drawing paper. If you just have a smaller piece of printer paper, that's fine too. It'll just be a slightly smaller portrait. 
I'm going to take the bottom corners and I'm gonna fold my paper in half, matching up the top corner, super per as perfect as I can get it. Okay, and then if I'm going too fast, don't forget you can just pause the video. I'm going to take the front flap of my paper and fold it down, matching up the corners again. So I just have one flap in the back. Now to get that last fold, I'm gonna fold this down on top of it. All right, now when I open up my paper, I have four sections. One, two, three, four. Now, I'm just gonna put this aside and say one thing real quick. You might remember this from last year. When I'm doing a self-portrait, and this is just a dry erase board to show you a quick sketch, of the best way to go about doing features on your face. Now, a lot of people, let's just say this is my head. My head's not a perfect circle, right? It's, it's an oval. You're gonna wanna get out a mirror so you can actually see shapes of your face and your eyes and your nose and your mouth. Here's my oval for my head. Now, a lot of people are just like, all right, Miss Casino, I'm done. There's my eyes, there's my nose, there's my mouth. Nope, we're not gonna do that, okay? Because we are artists and we can actually look a little bit closer at what these features really look like. So I'm gonna draw a very, 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 very light pencil line like this, dividing my face in half, and I'm gonna divide uh, again going across. Now it doesn't seem like it, but your eyes are actually right next to your ears. So. My eyes are not tiny dots. They are actually, um, well, my eyes kind of are a football shape, okay? But some people's eyes, obviously, are many different shapes. Just like we all have different skin colors, we all have different shaped eyes, nose, mouth, every part of our feature. That's what makes us original and special. Um, but I am doing a top and a bottom to my eye. And as you can see, because I'm using a dry erase board, I'm just erasing this line as I go. It's just a guide for me to make sure my eyes are on the same plane. Now, what else do we have? We have eyelids. And again, I'm just quickly sketching this out to show you the different parts. We have slightly bottom eyelids. I'm gonna fill that in later. Now we have irises. That's the colorful part of our eyes. Right now, we don't just see them as a full circle because our eyelids cover the top and bottom a bit. If you're looking off to the side, the irises might be closer to the side of your um, eye shapes. We have a pupil. Now, sometimes people like to leave a little bit of white in their pupil, like that. And everyone has different styles too. Yours might be a little more cartoony and might be a little more realistic. Now, a lot of people are like, Miss Casino, when I put my eyelashes in, I look too girly. Well, you can do, everybody, most people have eyelashes. So you definitely wanna add in some eyelashes. Could be any shape or size. Sometimes it's just making this top lid a little darker. If your eyelashes are short or dark, some people's eyelashes are blonde and you barely see them at all. All right. Later on, I'm gonna color in my irises color. I'm gonna put some texture in there that I see. Um, I'm not just gonna color it a flat blue like my eyes. I'm gonna use different shades of blue. Now, don't forget your eyebrows. Okay, and look in the mirror to see what shape your eyebrows actually are. Because people look a little strange if they have no eyebrows. Okay, now I'm gonna add a nose. Now the nose is about halfway down here. And I'm gonna add, I start by doing the bottom of my nose, maybe the side of my nostrils. I need some breathing holes. Don't forget about those. And my nose might come up like this. Maybe they come, you see the shadow where they come down by the creases of my eye. Now for the mouth, I'm not just gonna draw a straight line, but I do like to start out like that. And then I'm gonna add some lips. And I'm gonna add a bottom lip. And usually it's a little darker near the sides of your mouth. Maybe you have shadow there. All right, when you're shading your skin color and you gotta blend colors to get the right tone, you might put a little bit of like warmer red color here in your cheeks. If you have a prominent chin, maybe you draw in a part of your chin. All right, 
Um, what else am I forgetting here? Maybe some bottom eyelashes a little bit. Wow, I look like an alien because my hair is, now I'm not gonna put the hair up at the top. It's missing right now. That would be kind of weird, right? A lot of people are like, oh, I just put the hair all, along the top of the head. Well, this is actually the crown of my head right here. So if you have bangs, or even if you don't have bangs, your part of your hair probably comes about here. So around the mid part of my forehead is where I'm gonna start drawing hair and I'm gonna draw shapes that I see in my hair. All right, I'm not gonna draw every single hair strand. Oh, I, I need to put my ears in right next to my eyes and I can add some detail to those later. But just to quickly show you, my hair is gonna come however it's shaped in the front. Some people might have a side part, maybe the hair comes from the side. Maybe you have very short hair and no bangs, but still, it's gonna come about halfway down your forehead, okay? All right, if you have sideburns, you can put those in over, over your ears right here. My hair is gonna be like tucked behind my ear right now. Maybe it's on your face a little bit as well. All right, I don't think any of you guys have beards yet or mustaches, but you never know. All right, so that aside, I just wanna make sure that we're not just drawing a simple line with two dots for eyes. Back to our paper. And then I'm gonna let you get on with the actual drawing, the portrait part. I'm gonna fold this bottom part up and to give you the shape of the head, I'm gonna put a little dot in the center on the top and I'm gonna draw two arced lines that'll be the top of my head. All right. And I'm not sure if that's showing up in the video. I'm just gonna do it with a Sharpie so that you can really see it. But you're gonna do it with a pencil first, okay? Because you wanna be able to erase and adjust things. The Sharpie is the next step. That's when you're just tracing the pencil lines that you wanna keep and make bold. Now I'm gonna put a dot here on the bottom of this flap. And I'm gonna join, this is the bottom of my chin where my mask is gonna end. Right? And I'm gonna put a dot here, right where the flap is. And I'm gonna go like that, and I'm gonna go like that. Now there's my mask. And if I was doing some pencil, I might round this out a little bit, but it's a one-shot deal with the Sharpie. Okay, so now here's the top of my head, right? And here's gonna be my mask. Now I can make a really cool mask design, a mask maybe I own, or maybe I wish I owned. Um, the artists that have been working on this project that I've seen have designed some really cool masks. So this is a chance to also be a fabric pattern designer. Um, it could just be a solid color. That's okay too. But sometimes people really get creative with this and go really colorful. So there's my mask. Now, when I open this up, right, and I still have this bottom mask piece tucked under, on the one, Two, second bar, I'm gonna do a little dot here. That's gonna be the bottom of my chin without the mask on. And I'm gonna, again, draw two lines coming down. Now the only thing is, is that I wanna make sure that eventually I draw my neck, right? And I'm gonna draw some sort of shirt happening here. I don't forget your shoulders. And if you want, later on, after you finish your face underneath and your shoulders and your neck, you can do a cool background. All right, but first start with laying out your face. And remember, and I'm doing this a lot darker so you can see it on camera, about where this second fold is is where my eyes are gonna be, okay? But I'm gonna draw my eyes a bit above that. And normally I would draw it right on the line, but I'm gonna go a bit above so that when I fold my mask up, I can still see my eyes. Now, if for some reason they go a little bit under, you can always continue it on the fold. But if you wanna avoid drawing your eyes twice, you can draw your eyes here, okay? Just, and this is just a basic placement. My nose would come about here, my mouth would come about here, my hair would come about here. All right, ears here, there we are. All right, basic, basic layout. Here, don't forget, you don't want a floating head, so you're going to put in a neck. All right, and continue the hair down so that it looks the same as it does underneath when you fold your mask. 
All right, artists, thank you so much for joining me. If you like, no pressure, and it's not required, you can upload under your name, under the assignment, a quick, clear, focused JPEG or PNG camera shot of your self-portrait. I would love to see it. All right, have a great day, artists.